Hello and welcome to Wayne Valley High School for the site of today's North 1 Group 3 state playoff matchup between your Wayne Hills Patriots and the Wayne Valley Indians. I'm John Vitas alongside our soccer expert, Joseph Rapp. So Joe, coming into the game, Wayne Hills 8-8, eight and eight, Wayne Valley only five losses on the season. Valley's the fourth seed here at home, and Wayne Hills is the 13th seed. But Wayne Hills is red hot, so it really does not seem that way. You're absolutely right, Johnny. Wayne Hills is 7-1 and one in their last eight games after starting the season 1-7. and seven. So they got to have a boatload of confidence going into this game, no doubt. Well, these teams have met twice so far this season, so they're very familiar with each other. Not only the fact that they're in the same town and have played each other their whole lives growing up, but this very season, Wayne Hills beat Wayne Valley twice in a pair of upsets. So Wayne Hills obviously has confidence that they can beat this team, and Wayne Valley has a lot of anger that they want to let out and get some revenge on Wayne Hills today. What kind of roles are those going to play for both sides? Well, John, it's Wayne Valley, Wayne Hills. It's going to be a big game nonetheless, but after losing twice to Wayne Hills, Wayne Valley's got to have a chip on their shoulder. They want to come out today in the state game and prove that they can beat these guys. Now, unfortunately, we have to mention that Wayne Hills had seven players suspended a couple weeks ago due to an off-the-field incident. Two of those players, Mike Lokentor and Vladimir Perozak, were starters for this Wayne Hills team. They've been filled... Their holes have been filled by two underclassmen who have played well in, in replacing their starters. So Wayne Hills has won all three games since those suspensions. Is that out of their heads? Are they past it at this point, or is that still going to – are there, are there still holes to be filled with this Wayne Hills team? I don't think there's any holes. I mean, they've had experience. They've won their last three games, like you said. I don't think there should be any problems. Well, going into this game, there's a lot of talent on both sides. Palmarosa, Rob from um, – Rob Palmarosa, excuse me, from Wayne Valley is coming back today for, I believe, the first time all season after having a serious injury. He's supposed to be the best player on this Valley team. Very electric and can make plays. But for Wayne Hills, who has to make plays in order to counter that and come away with the win? Well, John, I'm going to go with Tyler Rubino, the sweeper today. I talked to Coach Graham before before the game, and he said he wanted a defensive-minded team for this game particularly. And I think Tyler, since he's the captain of the defense, why not him? Well, Coach Graham is going with defense in today's game. Only one forward in the lineup tonight, but I'm going to go with Evan Baum, the midfielder for Wayne Hills. Arguably the most talented and skilled player on this Wayne Hills team. He's had a good season, but not a great season, but he is a great player. And if Evan can step up today for the Patriots, they'll come away with the win. So, Joe, last but not least, your prediction for today's game. Who pulls it out in the Crosstown rivalry? Well, John, I think Wayne Hill's going to make it three times a season, beating Wayne Valley 2-1. to one. You know, Joe, I really don't know. It could go either way tonight. That's a good call. It's definitely going to be a close game. Valley's going to play hard. There should be a lot of people here as the game goes on, so it's going to be a good one. We'll be back for the opening kick after this. Go Lucas will inbound the corner with three minutes to go. She gets it to Giametta. Giametta corrals it, puts a shot on net, deflected into the net. A goal by Brittany Galone, and Wayne Hills wins the North One Group Three State Championship. Oh baby, call your friends, call your friends. Wayne Hills State Champions, baby. Couldn't script it any better, Joe. Couldn't script it any better myself. What a shot by Brittany Galone off the deflection from Jacqueline Giametta and Wayne Hills wins the North 1 Group 3 State Championship in dramatic fashion. Welcome back to Wayne Valley High School for today's North 1 Group 3 State Playoff matchup between Wayne Hills and Wayne Valley. I'm John Vitas, once again joined by our soccer analyst Joe Rapp. So the captains have met at midfield. Coin has been flipped, and we are just about ready to go here from Wayne Valley. Evan Baum and Tyler Rubino, the two captains representing Hills on that opening coin flip. So real quick, let's run through the starting lineup for your Wayne Hills Patriots. In the goal is senior keeper Max Sidemoon, who's had a pretty good year so far for the Patriots. Eight wins and eight losses to his record. Tyler Rubino, number five, the senior, will be at sweeper, which is the last line of defense. On defense will be sophomore number 20, Mike Walton. In the middle is junior number 9, Brett Prohl. And on the right is senior first-year player number 4, Eddie Schiller. In the midfield, it's going to be in the middle, number 6, senior Evan Baum. Flanked by number 18, junior Jason Gold, who leads the Patriots with 13 goals scored here in 2010. Tyler Colsar, number 23, the freshman, steps in. On the right side, as you see, Wayne Hill is taking the field right now. On the right is Eric Italiano, senior number seven. On the left is number two, senior captain Max Zager. And your one and only striker in today's starting lineup is number 12, the senior Benny Titel. So, Joe, going through that lineup, what stands out to you as Wayne Hills looks pretty psyched up for this game? 
Well, they really look well-rounded at every position, uh, offense and defense. I really think they're they're pretty strong in there, and they have a lot of confidence going this game, like we said in the pregame. So I, I expect a good game here, John. Do you? Yeah, it's going to be a real good one. Two evenly matched teams, like we mentioned earlier. Hills won the only two matchups between these two teams this year. But Valley with the better record and the much higher seed. Valley is the four seed. Wayne Hill is the 13 here. North one, group three. Uh, the counties are, are winding down. And uh, the regular season's over. So this is all that's left in the soccer season. It's November now. This is your goal is to play in November soccer. It's November 1st. And uh, these teams are ready to go. This is by far the uh, the biggest game of the season for both teams. And it can't get any better than this. Two crosstown rivals. These kids have been playing each other their whole lives. And uh, their high school careers are going to be wrapped up with a matchup against their friends. Well, John, what, what could you think if Wayne Valley lost to Wayne Hills three times in one season? I you don't see that very often. You don't, especially when the team that wins all three is the, is the worst team on paper. And that's what we could see today. So Benny Titel is going to start things off for Wayne Hills. Jason Gold, the leading scorer, kicks it out wide to Mike Walton, the sophomore, one of two underclassmen in the Wayne Hills starting lineup. Zager is going to flip it up toward the middle. Back across to Italiano. Tries to get it in the middle. And it's blocked by Rob Palmarosa. There's the guy we were referring to in the open as Schiller beats him to that ball, flicks it down here into your living room. It's going to be played up ahead as we have a change in the opening lineup, it looks like, for Wayne Hills. As that's going to be cleared out by Prohl, the centering shot is blocked by Walton. As Zager is going to take it off the far sideline. John, you got to think Wayne Hills' speed from Benny Titel, Tyler Urbino, and Max Zager is going to have a big factor in this game, no doubt, because soccer is about speed, and if, if you have a better endurance than the other team, you, you may pull out with a victory. Well, fitness will certainly play a role in today's game because it's going to be a high-paced kind of game with the, with the title on the line here in the first round of the state playoffs. It's going to be played up ahead to Paul Morosa. probably the tallest player on this Valley team, trying to find space in the middle, poked away by Rubino. Walton has it now. He's going to kick it back to Rubino. Up ahead to Gold. And Valley controls. I believe that's Tyler Colsar, number 24. He's listed at number 23 as that's going to go over to Wayne Hills. Um, Colsar is listed at number 23, but there's no 24 on the roster. So I'm going to assume that's, that's Tyler Colsar, the freshman. So Schiller will inbound for the Patriots. Gets a lot of strength on this one. Former football player right there. Inbounding it. Titel battles for it. And Valley heading it up. Colsar is going to try to nudge it forward but can't do so. Valley controls Italiano applying pressure. Baum over there for it now. Valley's in control of the ball right now. Palmarosa is going to handle it. No doubt. John Wayne Valley has been in control most, most of the start of the first half. But they haven't got anything going, as you see, go out of bounds. Well, that's the second turnover there by that left forward for Valley. Wearing the cap and armband, not playing like one so far. But Hills hasn't gotten deep into Valley's territory once so far in the first couple of minutes. Titel's going to try to change that here as he flicks it up ahead. Colsar with the steal. Flips it up ahead. Italiano making a run up ahead to Titel, who tries to box out his defender. Benny flicks it in toward Italiano. The give and go back to Titel in the corner. Benny's going to try to center it. He's got their goal scorer, Gold, in the box. Trying to break free. It's going to be poked out of bounds. They're going to give it to the Patriots. Baum will throw it in. I think Italiano may have kicked it a little too far up ahead to Benny. It was a good try. Well, the first time Wayne Hills has gotten into Valley territory this game. Baum with a long throw. Colsar heads it. Benny tries to poke it in. It's going to be stopped there by the Valley keeper. The first chance of the game for the Patriots, and Valley's able to stop it. Hills almost got a shot in there, but he could not poke it in. The left first, first offense, excuse me, John, first offensive opportunity for Hills on the day. The lefty boot goes all the way down to the other end of the field as Tyler Rabino showing a lot of confidence in his senior keeper, Max Seidman, there. Heads it back to him, the no look header. But Joe, that's a lot of trust between your sweeper and your goalie. No doubt, no doubt. And you got to have. Confidence to do that. I mean, they've been playing all year. They're playing the last two years together, so got to feel they have, they're pretty comfortable with each other. 
Palmarosa heads it straight up. Prol coming back the other way with the header. And now Baum is going to clear it up ahead for Wayne Hills. That's going to make it all the way back toward that 18-yard marker. Titel, no call on the foul there. Valley wanted a flag. No penalty there on Titel. Is this going to controlled by Valley here? Knocked up ahead into the Hills defense. Walton's there. Seidman calls for it and takes charge. You know, John Max is a very <laughs> colorful character. I mean, he he loves to take charge playing that goalie position. He, he talks loud and he puts players in the right position on the field at all times. Oh, well, that's Max, a sign of leadership. It is. Max is a competitive kid. He loves playing soccer. He loves being in charge of this Wayne Hills team over there in goal. The game is really in his hands. I and mean, when you think about it, goalkeeping is probably the most important position on the field in, in any sport, not just soccer. And soccer is no exception to that. And uh, Max has had a good year, especially, of course, in the last last half of the season. Like Joe said, it's worth noting, Wayne Hill starting the season 1-7, underachieving. They were had some high, pretty high expectations coming into the season. I mean, they weren't supposed to be um, ranked in the state by any means, but they were probably supposed to be a winning club. Started 1-7, a huge disappointment. But since then, they've bounced back very nicely, winning seven of their last eight. They come into this game at 500 at 8-8 eight and, eight, and trying to make a run in the states here as Rubino's going to flick that one up toward midfield. Valley has it. They're going to swing it across here toward number 14. Plenty of room to work. He's going to swing it wide to the captain. Colsar defending, flick back toward the middle. And Joe, a lot of senior leadership on this team. All four captains constantly playing. Uh, nine out of the 11 starters, or I'm sorry, seven or eight out of the 11 starters are, are, are seniors. Uh, Senior-laden lineup for Wayne Hills, and, and they're leaning on these kids. Well, you could see that, Jeremy. Coach Graham wants to go with experience. He doesn't want to leave inexperienced guys out there for a big game like this. It's a nice mix of guys, as you see that one. Rabino knocks it out of bounds. It's going to be a corner for Valley, first corner for either side today. But f the four captains all in there, all senior leaders. Not e we mentioned Seidman already and how he likes to take charge. But he's not even one of the captains. Benny Titel, Max Zager, Evan Baum, and Tyler Rabino, the four senior captains for Wayne Hills, all very talented soccer players as well as good men off the field. And they've earned those captain spots and and showed why they deserve to be leaders on this team. And for another, you got to give it up to Eddie Schiller. I mean, he didn't play soccer the first three years of high school. He played football. He gave football up this year, wanted to take it on the soccer field, and he's done pretty well as a starter. Yeah, Eddie earning a, a spot in the starting lineup as a senior, like Joe said, didn't play those first three years. That is unheard of for a, a varsity high school athlete. As this kick, look at the wind take that one. Seidman's kick. Hooking toward Italiano. He, Italiano had room, but that ball just sailed on Eric. Uh, nothing he could do with that. The wind completely blowing that one off toward the sideline. The wind's going to be a factor for any kick that goes up in the air, John. And it's going to come toward this near side where we are, Joe, because that's that's it's a pretty strong wind. It's been like this now for all of October, pretty much. That's how North Jersey is this time of year, and it's something these players have to adjust to, especially the goalkeepers. I mean, you saw right there, John, a that, big curve. Oh uh, yeah, that it's like Eric threw a curveball into the field. Well, Joe and I know something about curveballs being baseball players in our own rights, but a lot of hook on the balls today, especially on punts and long kicks. As Gold can't corral that one, going to be knocked ahead. Valley has numbers here, coming back the other way. Four on three for the Indians, and the kick goes way high onto the football field. Goal kick for Sidman. John, I talked to Coach Graham before the game, like I said in the pregame, and, and you could see that they, Wayne Hills only put one strike out there in Benny Titel. They really want to keep this game a 0-0 game for as long as they can. They want to frustrate the Wayne Valley Indians so that so it'll get, get them off their game. Yeah, Joe and I were both in the locker room for that pregame speech, and Joe's absolutely right. Coach Graham stressed defense today, and it's showing in his starting lineup only with one striker in there. Uh, Benny's the only Benny Titel, the only striker told Benny to just try to get in there and disrupt things on Valley's, in Valley's defense. Valley with a very strong defense and really, I mean, scoring would be great, but primarily just trying to frustrate the Indians because you know that tempers are going to be high for them. They want to pull, uh, get revenge and, and pull out the win because they know they're the better team in this game. And right, and if Hills can, can keep it tied or even take a lead in the early going, that's going to be 
even more frustration for Valley, and they might start pressing and not playing their game. As you see the cross here from Valley, it's somehow saved by Hills. They're battling for it. Valley in the box. The kick is knocked away by Hills. What a chance stopped by the Patriots. Oh, John, the goal hit Simon was out of, out. He was out of the box. They had an open net, but a great play by the Wayne Hills defense, saving that ball and keeping his 0-0 game. Well, Sideman slid for the ball and came up empty, and Valley put a great centering pass in on there, and they just couldn't put it home. Hills crashing. The boards, shall we say, using some basketball terminology, there, they dropped everyone into that box and, and did whatever they could to block the shots, and they did just that as Valley had two or three cracks at the net with no goalie there, but just too many too much traffic in the box for Hills, and they did a great job of defending that one, really showing some great teamwork and, and athleticism. So the first whistle of the game, by my count, Rabino's going to take it, coming up from his sweeper position. Oh, crushes a deep one there. In for Titel. Not there. Kolsar has it now. Blocked back toward Baum. Baum flips one into the box. And there's a spot there for Benny. Titel controls it. Guarded closely there by number 21. Benny puts a nice centering shot in net. There's gold in the box to score. Puts it in. Saved by Wayne Valley. Hills with their first chance of the game. These sides going back and forth now. One of many. Evan put a great lead pass to Benny. Benny just couldn't get in there. But what a pass by Evan. Hitting, kicking it over the Wayne Valley defender. Well, there's my key player making things happen. That's exactly what I said Baum needed to do. He's probably the most skilled player on this team. Plays club ball all around the country. He's going to Tampa in a couple weeks for a national tournament. He's got, he's got all the credentials. He made a great play there. I guess you could say he's kind of like the point guard of the team so to speak, going back to basketball term. Yeah, absolutely, Joe. He's, he's the facilitator out there. He makes things happen. He's the playmaker, basically, just trying to set up his forwards with the best opportunity to score. And Titel almost had one there. Didn't put himself in the best position as the ball kind of ran off on him. But Benny, Benny will capitalize every now and then. And if Baum keeps setting him up, they're bound to score. I was going to try to get one in here on a corner kick. It's probably where they're going to do most of their damage. They had a shot. Ooh. Wow. A nice corner from Wayne Valley. Simon went up for it and came up empty again. Oh. Hill's very fortunate that Valley didn't get ahead on that That was one. a perfect ball. There was space open on the right side of the net. Wayne Valley couldn't capitalize. So someone on Hills must have touched it because Valley is going to get another corner from the opposite side. So number seven jogging across the entire field. So they obviously like leaving the corners. Valley. in. On his kicks, I'd, we're informed that's Dan Bellett, one of the, the leaders on this Wayne Valley Club. Bellett, along with DeMeo and DeLuise, play with Evan Baum on that club team that will be headed off to Florida in a couple weeks in the, to play in the high school national championship for soccer. The club championship, of course, this being public high schools. As Baum clears that one, Schiller defends now. The player makes a run into the box. Schiller with a little arm check. Knocked away by Rubino. Tyler with a great defense getting right in the middle of things and be able to knock that one out and set it up for Jason Gold. Gold makes a run, flips it up to Titel who can't handle it. Valley controls now. So after Valley had a great start, Hill's starting to even things out a little bit as Valley has the ball again. Schiller with the steal. Eddie flips it up ahead. That's off an Indian. It's going to go all the way back to midfield. A nice play by Schiller. This John, you can see Eddie brought his football mentality onto the soccer field. I mean, he has been thrown out of a couple games this year. <laughs> games this year. Yeah. So, you know, he's came, he comes to play. Oh, yeah. Eddie's bringing that tough football mentality, and it's served the Patriots well. I mean, they've played a, a tough schedule, and they've they've played like like champions so far. Eddie, like you said, started a fight in one game. And you know what? That really turned Hills around. I mean, you talk about not wanting to see fighting and things and, and negative negativity from either side, but that that fight really was a turning point in this Patriots season, and it kind of got things riled up a little a little bit. It got the school talking about Wayne Hill soccer, and and with the spotlight, the the Patriots have turned things around. Like we said, going seven and one in their last eight. Definitely gave them a spark, John. I mean, like you said, seven and one in their last. That's pretty impressive for where this team was. Absolutely. In the middle of the season. 
Absolutely. That's one of the most distinct turnarounds you will ever see in high school sports. Because for the most part in high school, whether it's soccer or any other sport, the better team usually wins. There's not many upsets in high school, especially in, in sports like soccer. And for Wayne Hills to start off 1-7 and seven and basically can be completely down on their season, to come back like this is just... A, a, not much you can say about it, just a, a big step in the right direction for the program. And probably one of those reasons was because early early in the season when they lost seven games, they were winning in most of those games and they couldn't finish the, finish it off. But now they're starting to do that, they're starting to gain confidence at the end of the games to finish, finish them off and get the win. That's a great point, Joe. I mean, I heard the same things from these kids. They said, yeah, we're one in seven, but we were beating good teams late in the game and blew it. And that shot goes wide. It's going to be a goal kick for Sidemen as Valley makes a run there. But this team knew they were better than 1-7. The expectations said they were supposed to be much better. They are supposed to be an above 500 team this year. And, and they knew that they weren't supposed to lose those games that they did down the stretch. I mean, I knew they lost to Clifton with seconds left in the game. That would have been a very nice draw if they could have pulled that one out. Clifton being one of the best teams in North Jersey. And Hills losing by one goal to them late in the game. As Rabino takes that kick. Usually the, you see the goalie take the goal kicks, but... Tyler obviously with a strong leg, and he got it past the midfield. So Valley in control of the ball. Hill's defense has been great so far today, but Valley has controlled the tempo for the most part. Centering it for Baum, who clears it out. The high hop handled nicely there by number 23, get, having some ups for the Indians. They're going to play it up the far side now toward that baseline. Nice centering shot cleared up by Rabino. It goes out of bounds. Simon was right there. If Tyler let it go past him, I'm sure Max would have eaten that one up. But instead, it's going to be a corner for the Indians. John, going back about the Hill season, I mean, the games they won were big. They were league games, so they, they were still high in the league stands. That will, that, that's what caused them to be the league champions this year. Yes, well, I, good point, Joe, again. Wayne Hill's three-way tie for the league championship, like we said, started 1-7, a 500 team. Usually 500 teams aren't winning any championships. But Wayne Hill's, as Schiller clears this one, it's probably going to go out of bounds, and it will. So Valley's going to get a throw in here around midfield. But Hill's, the games that mattered in the league, they played well in them, and they finished in a three-way tie for the league, league championship with West Milford and this very same Wayne Valley team that you see today. So, I mean, technically, these are the two best teams in the league, along with West Milford. What do you know? They meet up in the States. That score has got to be settled. It's got to be one team. And it certainly will today, as we will not see a draw in today's game. I believe they played two 15-minute overtime periods, and if it and is then not a, then a, then a then a shootout, that would be exciting. I mean, you only see that in the knockout round of the World Cup, let alone high school. Well, we saw it earlier this year, John. I was at the girls' county game when they played Valley, and that ended up being a shootout in favor of Wayne Valley. They won that game, so it's pretty exciting. I'm, I'm sure it is, and the way this game is going as we're 23, we're, we're already almost halfway through the first half, and there's no score. I mean, the way the defenses are playing at this rate, it could very well be 0-0 in the 110th minute. But that's what Wayne Hills wants, wants to be. They want it to be a 0-0 game late. Well, Wayne Hills recently has had success in overtime. They defeated Lakeland with two minutes to go in the overtime period on a Jason Gold goal. And that got them that tie for the league championship that they were seeking as Tedesco battles Gold for it here. It's going to go out of bounds in favor of Valley. As Tedesco wants a, wanted a call there, barking at the referee. Sent up ahead to Palmarosa out of his reach. It's gonna be a free kick for the Patriots. Now John, since Wayne knows having one striker, like I said before, I mean the ball's gonna be with Valley on the offensive side, probably for the whole game. They're going to have a lot of guys on defense in Wayne Hills, and they want to keep it like that. Very true, Joe. Wayne Hills with one striker, like we've mentioned so many times. The ball's going to be on their side of the field. Valley wants to score. They want to get revenge on Wayne Hills. And Hills content with playing defensive game, and they've, they've proven they can win like that this year, and they've proven they could stop Valley so far today as we are now twenty minutes, just about 20 minutes into this first half. And Valley, they've had a couple chances, but nothing real threatening. As this one gets in the box, and Simon's right there to clean it up. Just great coverage from Wayne Hills. His, his defense pro was in on that stop. 
as this kick is a high one. Win getting behind it again as that header is going to be stopped by Italiano up ahead to Titel. Benny makes a move on it. He's got space. He's by himself out there. The ball is knocked forward for the Valley Keeper. So no harm there. You can see the last two punts. Max Simon has kicked. The win has played a factor and sending it a little bit to the right and out of Italiano's reach. So Titel and number six battling for it, and they're going to give it to Titel and Wayne Hills. So a first, the second free kick of the half for the Patriots, and Pro will take it. Oh, he's going to hand it off to Rubino now. Tyler definitely is going to take these kicks today. That's the way it's going. He said before the game, Rubino will take the free kicks and the goal kicks. You can see that he's got the best boot on the team. Well, Rubs is within striking distance of that box right now as he sets up the O. Knocks it in there, it's on target, and it's stopped by the keeper. Loose ball in the box. They're battling for it, and it's cleared out by Wayne Valley. Colsar was the closest to it. Titel was diving for the ball, and now Palmarosa has a run at it as they're going to get it up for the Indians toward that far box. John, that kick was amazing. It didn't even look like he kicked it that hard. He, wasn't he was trying to set it up for his teammates, but it, end it ended up going right into the goalie's hands. But the wind played a factor again. Tyler put that ball right into where the crowd was, but the wind just had to drift back toward the near side, and it went right into the goalie's hands. Unfortunate, but this wind, we've seen it third kick today that we've seen the wind just completely knock that ball down. So... S Rabinos kick another good one. Italiano up ahead to Colsar. Colsar back to Baum. Baum working on number nine to Desco, but that's going to be knocked up ahead for Valley. Walton battling Palmarosa for it on the far side. And it's going to go out of bounds. Walton with the smart play to let it go there. And now that he gets it up to head to Zager. But I haven't mentioned his name too much so far. Into the box for Valley. They clear it back out. So Valley in full control on offense. They just, Hills' defense has just stopped them every time they've gotten close. Here's a strong boot into the box, knocked down by Walton. And Italiano trying to get it ahead for Titel, intercepted by the Valley. You know, John, I noticed when Wayne Hills gets the ball on defense, there's really no one to pass to up except Benny Titel. But he's always covered by four Wayne Valley defenders, so it's difficult to push the ball. Exactly, Joe. Four guys on defense for both teams, and Wayne Hill's only with one striker. And there's just nowhere to go with the ball. Wayne, The, the mid midfield for Wayne Hill is going to have to stop trying to give deep balls to Titel and control it themselves and, and dribble it up rather than giving deep passes for Titel because unless it's a perfect ball right into Titel's lap, Wayne Hill isn't going to be able to control the ball, as you see Italiano with a tough fight for it right there. And it goes out of bounds back to the Indians as... We're going to get the first sub of the game for Wayne Valley. They chuck in a substitution. Palmarosa will come out. So maybe the knee getting to him or maybe just trying to get him a breather. As the substitute also has a, a knee brace as well. As the ball goes out of bounds off Wayne Hills. And Joe, school is over. The students are here. And all of a sudden we have a huge crowd here for this one. <laughs> I guess so. With 2 p.m. start time, ninth period still going on. So as 20 minutes of this game has gone on, it's now 2.25 and school has let out and both bleachers are packed with students as well as parents, of course. Oh, and Titel goes down hard. That's going to be a foul on Valley. So probably Rubino, as he's sprinting up to take this one, is going to get a nice chance here. I, I would just put in the... I would just put a shot on net every time with Tyler's foot, John. <laughs> I don't know about you. Oh, Baum oh. is actually going to take this one. Oh, actually, no, Zager. Like Zager. Zager, excuse me. They're all wearing those those orange cleats. But probably a good 50 Valley students here for this one. I mean, very convenient. You walk out of school and there's a state soccer game out your window. Yeah, I guess it works out. So Zager's center is going to be short right into the box and it's headed out by Valley. Oh, a bicycle kick there from the Indians. Schiller keeps it in, up ahead to Gold, and it's going to be knocked toward that far sideline. Schiller chases it at way out of position. He normally plays this side of the field. Schiller's going to throw it in. So Hill's finally controlling some action. As the Wayne Hill's 
defense has moved way up. Only three defenders now as Schiller has found his way to that other side of the field. It's good that Wayne Hill's defense got a breather. I mean, they've been working all throughout this first half. Wayne Valley having the ball most of the time. Well, Italiano has dropped back to compensate for Schiller up the field, and now he drops back. As Pearl heads that one up towards Zager, Zager heads that one up toward the Valley bench. And Zager somehow is, no, he can't keep it in. It does go out of bounds. Valley with the throw in. Zager guarding. Walton helps him out. Ooh, right into the face of the Valley player. That one hurt. <laughs> that one's centered toward the middle. Pearl, Pearl heads it out. That's Baum with a strong kick. Titel somehow not offside. He has a run at it here. Valley cl players closing from behind. Titel trying to find space. He's quadruple covered. Not much he can do. Going toward that flag. He's going to try to find some help. Valley player down on the ground. Zager flicks it into the middle. Cleared out of bounds off of Valley. So Hills will get a throw in. Zager finds gold. Back to Baum, flip the head back to goal, and it's going to be knocked away by Valley. Rubino heads it over to Schiller. Great ball control by Patriots, especially Tyler Rubino. But Valley takes it right back. Back toward the middle, and Kolsar is there to f clear it out toward Walton. And here's Gold with a run at it on the far side, trying to find Benny, but can't do it. Again, just not enough forwards for Wayne Hills to get anything going offensively. We haven't seen much of goal today, John. I mean, he does lead the team in goals with 13, but Wayne Valley has neutralized him perfectly so far. Well, both teams have gone with four defenders, and they're basically having their way. I mean, four on one. No one's going to score like that unless the midfield makes a nice play, and that's what Evan Baum's trying to do right now. A nice ball there for Zager, and it's intercepted by Valley. Pulsar seals it. Valley gets toward the middle. Some room now. Shot toward the net. And Sybin lets it go out of bounds. Nice awareness there for Max. Letting that one roll past him, knowing that the net was no longer in play. Well, he's been a goalie all for years, John. I think he has experience in that. Well, he definitely knew where he was on the field there. Because... Last thing you want is you letting that ball roll right into the net. And that one's not wide by too much, but he knew it was going to be wide and let it go. As Rubino hits a low line drive, that's what you got to do in the wind. I mean, a very cold day here from Wayne Valley as Schiller tries to get it out. Can't do it. Valley has numbers coming back the other way. The centering ball is stopped by Rubino, but the Valley shot is blocked by Baum and Prol up ahead. Valley with a couple of runs here. They got some space in the box, and it's going to be saved by Sidemen. So a shot on net by the Indians, and Simon comes away with it. Pretty good give and go by the Wayne Valley. They get they did get a very good shot on net, but Simon with a great save. Yeah, Wayne Valley with a very nice play there. And almost almost made something happen. They had one more guy cutting through. Otherwise, that probably would have been a goal. Simon stepped right in front of him just in time. So that one goes over the net. Joe, you think Tyler's leg's going to get tired after a while of all these kicks? Well, he is prone to injury, as <laughs> you and I well know. <laughs> you and I well know. <laughs> so maybe not, but he's a tough kid, so I think he'll get through it. Well, Joe, as many games as Tyler couldn't pitch this year for baseball, how many games did he start in center field? He started every game in center field, John. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> So a free kick for the Indians. Or actually, they're going to give him a throw in? Yes. It looks like a... Th oh, nope. Free kick. Nope. No throw in. <laughs> Get it right, John. It's a short one. Back to the initial thrower. Italiano there guarding. 11 minutes to go in the opening half. Plus stoppage time. There is stoppage time in high school, right, Joe? You're the soccer analyst of the two. I am the soccer, soccer expert, as you said. There is stoppage time, John, the last two minutes. 
Well, it's not always two minutes. Well, it always says two minutes on the scoreboard, so I don't want to hear it. <laughs> well, to be honest, this is only, I think, my fifth high school soccer game. I did called a couple boys or a couple games last year, one boys, one girls, and I've only been to one or two others. So I'm not exactly a soccer expert. I'm more of a baseball, football kind of guy. Maybe a little basketball too, but I think I think I got the basics down of of this game they call football everywhere else. <laughs> well, let's hope so. I mean, you're doing play by play. You're doing a pretty good job right so far. I appreciate that, Joe. Gold gives a little nudge up for Zager. Can't get it up to him as Max had a little bit of a run going there, but Valley coming back the other way. That one's toward the corner. It's going to stay in bounds for Valley. Nice centering shot headed out there by Italiano. Eric with a great defensive play for the Patriots to knock that one away because he had one on one coverage with a Valley forward. And if it got past Eric, that was probably going to be a goal for the Indians. And Italiano headed it out of trouble. This is Prohl over there and couldn't get a foot on that one. Turns it over to Wayne Valley. Valley finding space toward the near side here. They're going to center it right to Schiller. Oh, and Eddie misses that one. Fouled that one off, John. <laughs> well, Joe and I both play baseball, so yes, he fouled that one off into the bleachers. So Valley got a throw in. It's safe to say Eddie wasn't the kicker of the football team, so maybe the foot skills. Oh, as that one goes off the post. Valley trying to get it back toward the middle. Uh, that one was close. Seidman was right there, but that shot was right off the inside post. Otherwise, a couple inches over, and that's a goal. And Schiller tries to get it ahead. Like I said, Eddie hasn't played soccer in three years, so it's, it's amazing that he made the starting lineup, and obviously he's not going to nail every kick. Well, John, he did play soccer his whole life before high school, so he, he still has the skills and the muscle memory of how to do it. Right, he's not just going to say, oh, I feel like playing soccer, so I'm going to start varsity. He played his whole life, just, of course, the last three years. He was a, an excellent defensive end for the Wayne Hills football team, who, of course, had the big win Friday night against Ramapo. No doubt, John, it was a big win. And I used to play with Eddie in the soccer team back in fourth or fifth grade, and let's just <laughs> say we were the two best players in the team. Well, I'm sure Eddie remembers that, Joe. And he wouldn't be as good of a player without you. No doubt. I could have won out. But I didn't. Well, I'm glad you're on the baseball team. Because I'm sure your team would be nothing without me, of course. Your skills would be much diminished if you had to split your season with soccer. That's a nice ball into the middle. Just again, Valley with one forward there, just like Wayne Hills. Not enough people on offense to make things happen. That one's going to come to the near side. A nice ball there. Controlled by number two. He's going to be stolen by Schiller. That's knocked into the box. Defended by Prohl. And it goes out of bounds. Nice shield off by Brett Prohl, the junior. Earning his team a free kick as Valley's going to get Palmarosa back into the game. After getting about it. 10 to 12 minute break, 7.53 to go here in the opening half. No score here from Wayne Valley. Rabino's kick is a strong one. Going to be handled by Wayne Valley. Goes out of bounds, so Italiano will get a throw in. He finds Baum, who is wide open. Baum flips it up ahead. Benny can't get to that one. Going to be handled by Valley's keeper. I do not have a, va a roster for Wayne Valley, so right now, the names are limited. I'm just going by the people I know, which is very few. But hopefully at halftime we'll be able to talk to someone and get get the names in here, as of course this game will be broadcasted to Valley fans as well. Something we don't normally don't normally serve you. We're usually just a Wayne Hills telecast, but of course this game will be shown all around Wayne, so Valley players might be watching it as well, and I apologize if you're a Valley fan at home, and you know all the names, and you're like, hey, I know that kid's name, but you're calling on number nine. I'm sorry. I'm a Wayne Hills student. I don't know all of their names. Well, you couldn't expect more from a one-time V Award winner, John. <laughs> Joe, you're always trying to remind me that you have two V Awards, and I only have one. But if I didn't write your name down on the paper, you would only have one, too. John, without 
me, you wouldn't even had one. So there you go. No, you or didn't take part in the production of my video whatsoever. I just happened to put your voice in it, so I felt I should give you credit because I'm a nice kid. I'd have no comment on that. Just Joe, saying no false things on air. Joe, no, not cool. no one's gonna take away your V award because you weren't in the production aspect. You were in the video. You get the trophy. I helped you with the production, John. How? How? And there's we're broadcasting a soccer game. I can't go on explaining what I did for your no, video. No, you were in in the calls. Don't get me wrong. Your face was in the video. You just didn't help edit it. As that's a long ball saved by Simon. That's a that's a nice shot. Is the only person to help me was the the senior left midfielder Max Zayer, who's on that far sideline right now, and he he picked the music for my video. All right, John. Um, I think you should get back to him play by play. I'm sorry, soccer bores me sometimes. <laughs> Colsar is gonna knock this one up into the valley box taken there by their keeper. As Baum couldn't handle it. Header, a nice high arcing header. E much easier to control than the line drive. Sideman out of the goal to take that one. Max, an aggressive goalie, not afraid to leave the net as that ball is up ahead for Wayne Hill's going to be battled for. That's a substitute into the game for the Patriots as Baum goes after that one. So Wayne Hill's getting their first substitute in the game. That's number 17, Kyle Keegan, getting into the game. One of the men added to this Wayne Hills team after the suspensions was not on the varsity team all year and getting some action here in a very important state playoff game. So we'll see what Keegan can do trying to get Titello rest over there. I mean, Benny was working hard trying to, to make something happen offensively for Wayne Hills, just outnumbered there by the Valley defense. And now Keegan giving him a breather and, and hopefully Keegan can make something happen with 421 to go in the opening half. I think he'll be out there for the rest of the first half too, John. No, no question about it. Trying to get an extended rest for Titel. Of course, you'll get the the 10 minutes for halftime in addition to this 10 minutes of the game. Keegan, I'm sorry, that's Colsar flipping it up for Keegan. Colsar fights for it. He's got Baum, flips it back to him. Up ahead for Keegan and taken away by Valley. Palmarosa up ahead to Tedesco. Tedesco working on Walton and it's knocked out of bounds. Back over to Wayne Valley. I don't think Wayne Hills wants to make a last offensive push. I think they just want to not let Wayne Valley score for these last oh. minutes, make it, give them momentum and going into the locker rooms. No question about that. Just trying to not allow anyone to score right now, kind of saying, all right, we played a tough, competitive, aggressive first half. Both teams playing pretty well so far. Defensive game. We're content with going in with a 0-0 game at the half. I mean, I mean, that's the kind of game it is right now. No one getting much going on offense and it, it deserves to be a 0-0 game with the break but of course either team would take a cheap goal right now I was trying to get your last minute 30 second Tom Brady 50 yard bomb for the uh, Vinatieri field goal and that's what that's what Brady did best and that's what Wayne Hills and Wayne Valley are trying to do is Keegan makes a run and it's finally taken away Keegan with a nice little push there gonna be taken back by Valley Knocked away by Colsar to ruin that momentum. Here's gold on the defense, and it's going to be kept in somehow by Valley. 2.26 to go in the opening half. That's Walton battling. And Joe, I've been pretty impressed by the... Uh, I'm sorry, that was... That was... Pro... Or that was gold over there, but... I've been pretty impressed by the sophomore, Mike Walton, earning the starting job as just a sophomore. What, what do you think? I think he's done a pretty good job out there. I mean, he, I mean, he's done his job that Coach Graham wanted him to do, and right now Wayne Valley doesn't have any points, so I guess. Yes. Yeah. Well, though, I mean, the whole defense worth mentioning. Their names: Tyler Rubino, <laughs> Brett Prohl, Mike Walton, and Eddie Schiller have done a great job limiting Valley's chances so far. And of course, Seidman, the keeper, I have to give credit to him for not allowing anything in the net, as that one is headed up and knocked away by Rubino. That's going to eventually go out of bounds after a nice bounce.
There's Keegan trying to get it, can't do it. Kulsar guarding with gold. 1.45 to go in the opening half. Or they've stopped it now, so we're in stoppage time. It's literally stoppage time because the clock has stopped. Simon goes up for that one. That was a great ball from Valley. And Simon again with a strong aggressive play to go up over the top of Wayne Valley. And he gets a strong boot up ahead here to Keegan. Wayne Hill's making things happen here late in the half, and it's knocked away by Wayne Valley. Over to Zager now. Great competitive action now late here in the half. Some sequence, Johnny. I mean, Simon, a great save, got up. We learned that we, he got some hop, but, you know, that was a great punt. That was a good lead. But we just couldn't come away with a goal. A nice, nice, like you said, sequence for the Patriots. And here's a ball from Schiller up ahead to Kolsar. Kolsar made a nice move, but it's taken away by Wayne Valley. These teams very evenly matched. And they are just going toe-to-toe -to -toe right now, back and forth. As Kolsar gets it, you can just feel the intensity kind of Ratchet it up a notch here, trying to get a late goal in the first. Neither team either to do so to this point. As she, Baum puts a little bit too far for Italiano, right up against us. As that's a pass up ahead for Tedesco. Knocked out of bounds by Schiller. And that's going to do it for your first half of action here from Wayne Valley High School. Opening round of the North 1 Group 3 State Playoffs. No score here from Wayne Valley. Joe, thoughts on the first half? Well, I think Wayne Hills fulfilled what Coach Graham wanted them to do in this first half. Just keep it a defensive-minded team. Don't let Wayne Valley get any opportunities to score. And I think they did that. Now he announced a 0 your game. Wayne Hills has them right where they want them. You hit it right on the head, Joe. Not much else to say about this opening half. Coach Graham's ideology is coming to fruition, and Wayne Hills playing the game he wanted them to play, which is a defensive game. Frustrating Valley. Valley's had some chances, but Sidemans played well. The defense has played even better. And right now, Wayne Hills is in prime position, exactly where they want to be at 0-0 here at halftime. And it's going to be a very intense second half. We know that both teams don't want to end their season. So it should be a great second half. So stay tuned. We'll be back with more from Wayne Valley after this. And that's the game. That is the game. Your Wayne Hills Patriots beat the Northern Highland Highlanders 4-1. to one. There was pandemonium at Patriot Stadium. Wayne Hills 4 Northern Highlands won a great game by both teams, but obviously Wayne Hill's coming out on top. Welcome back to Wayne Valley High School for today's North 1 Group 3 state playoff matchup between the 14th, 13th seeded Wayne Hills Patriots and the 4th seeded Wayne Valley Indians. I'm John Vitas, joined here by our soccer analyst Joseph Rapp. So Joe, a scoreless first half, not much going on from Wayne Valley. Neither team with too much offense. But Joe, what do you expect to see from both teams here in the second half? I think we're probably going to see the same thing as we saw in the first half, John. Defensive-minded teams on both sides of the ball, no doubt. So that one's going to go out of bounds back as the teams switch sides now. So this one's going to go to Wayne Valley. So Valley will control here back in their own box. It's going to be headed up ahead. Well, we got a switch of sides here. So now we're joined by Max Zager and Mike Walton. <laughs> As Joe gets a kick here on the loose ball. I got, I, got <laughs> I got skills in front of the camera and behind, John. Well, Joe, isn't it nice to see some new faces over here on this side of the field? I mean, we were staring at Eric Italiano's mug all the first half, and now we got Mike Wallen and Max Zager. That's true, John. Not, Good point. Not Good to point. say Max and Mike are better looking, but it's a, it's a nice change up. As, ooh, Colsar looks to be hurt after he went to head that one, and maybe a little head to head collision there from Colsar and the Valley players, as we did get some names at the half, so hopefully we'll be able to name both sides pretty soon. It's gonna be, excuse me. I'm sure make this broadcast a little better if we actually knew both teams. Well, you know, it's hard to it's hard to do your research. Not a lot of these rosters are online. Obviously, Wayne Hills athletic department doesn't have the Wayne Valley roster, and we didn't have a chance to uh, 
to network a little bit before the game. Of course, all the students were in school, so we couldn't ask them. But now they're here, and we're getting some insight. So it's going to be a corner kick for Wayne Valley. Just two minutes into this open and into the second half, no score here in the first round of the state playoffs. As Coach Graham is going to help number 24 Tyler Colsar off the field, so we'll have to see if they who they sub in for him. As it looks like Keegan has stayed in the game for Titel. And it looks like Lepore might be coming in. I can't quite see the number. He's going to try to get in there before the kick. It's a good ball into the middle of the box. It's going to be knocked long, but Valley's still going to have control of it. The ball in the box defended by Rabino. The shot on net is blocked by Rabino. Walton has it battling Palmarosa. A little bit of height differential there, Joe. A little bit. To say the least, as Palmarosa's shot, or it might have been a pass, I don't know, it goes wide and they're playing catch now as that one goes out of bounds back over to Wayne Hills. <laughs> back and back and forth across the field. I, I, get, I don't know if they're playing catch, Sean. You can't use your hands, so looks, you, I don't to me, I really don't understand what you're saying. To me, it looked like <laughs> a bunch of shots that the wind took and brought back onto the opposite side of the field and kept in play. Well the, the, well, the win has been still a little rough in the start of the second half, so it definitely will play a factor the rest of the game. Well, Baum jumps up high for that one, and it's going to be given back to him now as he flicks it up ahead for gold. Valley controls now to the far side. Ball's flicked up ahead, header by Schiller. Can't get it out. Valley flick, putting it back toward the middle and it's knocked out of bounds by Prohl. Prohl again with the deep kick, it goes out of bounds, back to Wayne Valley. So Joe, all the action on Hill's side of the field, similar to the start of the first half. I think, well, that's what Wayne wants to do, John. We keep saying it over and over again. They're not going to get many offensive opportunities, so that, that only needs one place for the ball to be. In the defensive end. Yes, sir. So Schiller's throw-in is a nice one up ahead to Gold. Gold trying to get past the defender, and he does it. Gold with a little chip up ahead. Couldn't find Keegan. They continue to battle for it as Gold is going to bounce it off his chest. Find Baum cutting in toward the middle. Baum with space up ahead to Keegan. Keegan up against the goalie, and Riviello makes the play. So the first run of the second half for Wayne Hills is goes empty. So we're almost five minutes in here to the second half. Palmarosa flips it up ahead to Tedesco. And Walton knocks it out of bounds, so it'll stay with Valley. Rubino with another strong kick. That one's going to go all the way back to Valley side of the field. We've seen Rubino do this time and time again. So Schiller up ahead now. And Valley continuing to control the ball. They get it to Hills' side of the field. This is Zager making an aggressive run at it. He takes control. Max Zager looking for someone to pass to. He finds himself all the way on the right side of the field now. Tries to get it for Keegan. Can't do it. And Valley takes it right back along that far sideline. This is Baum who wins that battle. Keegan on with a run now. Trying to get it into the middle for gold. And he can't do it. Knocked away by Valley. They're trying to keep it inbounds. And they are able to get it to avoid the corner kick. And Hill is going to have to throw it in. Looks like Benny's going to come back into the game, John. And Benny Titel will re-enter for Keegan. So striker for striker. And Wayne Hill is continuing to go with just one forward. And Joe, do you expect Coach Graham to uh, throw in a second forward in the last 10 or 15 minutes of this game if it's still 0-0? 
I don't know, John. He said he wanted to keep this game 0-0 as long as possible, but, you know, sometimes you you got to try to score. At some point in the game, you have to try to score. Right, you're not going to win the game if you don't you're score. You're not going to trust your goalie and your players in a yeah. shootout. So Valley with a huge run. Palmarosa one-on-one -on -one with Seidman. The shot, it's in the back of the net. Rob Palmarosa coming back from injury. Put Wayne Valley on top. A breakdown in the Wayne Hills defense. And Valley goes up one nothing. Rob not being here the whole season puts a great shot on that. Could have been offsides there. We, we'll never know. But right now it's one nothing Wayne Valley. So I don't know where the Wayne Hills defense was on that one. And somehow Palmarosa got through the entire defense. And there was only one man to beat, and he did just that. Simon came out of the net. Nothing else he can do but try to cut down the angle at that point. And Palmarosa made the, made the play, and Valley's up 1-0. And Baum flips it up ahead for gold. And now Hills has to go on the offense. Their whole mindset of playing defense is out the window now. They need to score. There's 32 minutes to do that. Titel can't get to that one. Goes to the keeper, Riviello. You're right, John. Now you're going to see Wayne Hills maybe put another forward up there because they, they got to score now. They can't just play defense all game. Bound battling Tedesco. Tedesco flips one up towards Walton. Walton with the header. It's taken there by Bellet number seven. And Prol clears it. Zager in control now. Zager up ahead toward Italiano. Italiano makes a run, and he falls, and they're going to call a foul on Valley, so Italiano draws the whistle. And Rabino, of course, is going to take it. Where's the, where's the shoot about Hills? You could see a possible shot on net by Tyler. There it goes. And it's in the box, headed us straight up by Valley. Another header from the Indian. Zager tracks it down. Wow. Zager over to Benny in the corner. Titel makes a move. Titel the lefty kick toward the middle, and it's cleared out by Wayne Valley. And nice job by Prol to push it back toward Valley's net, but the Indians control again. Seidman with a high kick. We haven't seen a ball go that high today. <laughs> Cleared up ahead. Lepore will get it back to Rubino, back to Lepore. Prol is going to look for Titel. Benny with a nice shield off. He controls it. For Titel tries to get it to Italiano. <laughs> Schiller's going to throw it in for the Patriots with 30 minutes to go in the game. We're 10 minutes into the second half. 1 0 Wayne Valley. The ball goes out of bounds, so Lapore will give way to Italiano on the throw-in. Joe Wayne Hill's looking to go to the toward the stronger players on the throw-ins. Um, they're kind of limiting limiting it to uh, three or four guys, maybe two on each side. Is it a little picky with who they who they want to throw the ball in? Well, why wouldn't they want their stronger players to throw it in? If you have the best arm, they can really put it wherever they want. Uh, it makes sense, as that kick from Valley is going to go out of bounds. John, who do you think who needs to uh, step up more? Who, who do you think is going to score that goal to tie it up? Well, I think, to me, Rubino has played well. And, uh, I mean, Titel is, is an obvious pick because he's the forward and he's supposed to score. But I think uh, Zager and Baum can both, can both step up at any moment and make a big play. And, of course, Jason Gold, the leading scorer, is, is counted on heavily to put up the ball in the net because... I mean, he's got, I believe, 13 goals this season. I mean, that's crazy. I think the next closest player is Zager with three. I mean, for for a midfielder to score 13, probably about half the goals for the entire team. That's amazing. As Rubino will take the kick. 
Ooh, a powerful kick from Rubino. That one's too long. And it's stopped by Riviella. Wow. What a ball from Rubino. That's three quarters of the field, Joe Rapp. Yes, it was, John. That's good math. And, um, <laughs> you know, like there was no wind on that play either. If, I don't know if you felt any, but no, the I wind didn't. did not play a factor in that kick for sure. Zager heads it up. Going to be taken by DeMeo. DeMeo flicks it wide. They're going to go with the give and go. Simon coming out to make the save. Max Simon with another aggressive slide, and he comes away with it and is going to boot it down the field. There's that three-quarter distance again, and Riviello will handle it. So from one goalie to the other, it's like indoor soccer. They're making it look easy. <laughs> Of course, when high school soccer having a smaller field, not 100 yards. I believe it's 80 or 90. I'm not really sure. I just know it is smaller than professional size. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> so Baum loses that one. <laughs> Lepore going after that. He knocks it out of bounds. And Joe, you see the players knocking it out of bounds quite a bit, just trying to keep it out of the middle of the field. Do you, do you like that play, or do you, would you rather well, see them try to control it? Well, for the defense, I like it because they just want to stop the action. They, and they, you know, they don't want to. They don't want the offense to set up. So, I guess it's a good decision by defense standards, but not offense. Well, I don't watch that much soccer, and uh, we've seen it a lot today. The, the guy is just trying to break up the tempo of the offensive run and just knocking it out of bounds. Let him throw. Let him throw it in. I know throw-ins can go, you know, you can get an easy seal off a of throw-in, but I would like to see the Wayne Hills defenders and midfielders just try to control it on their own foot and make a, make a move. Because if you can beat your defender, then, then you got room in front of you, and Titel goes down hard. No call as Benny almost was able to get it back. It goes all the way to Gonzalez, number 23. Now Palmarosa is going to flip it, flick it up, and Walton handles it. Zager battling Gonzalez. This is DeLuise over to DeMeo. See, Benny's all over the place on offense, Sean. Yeah. Just ran around the field. Ty Tell has been a spark plug the last few minutes for this Wayne Hills team. He's been everywhere. He had that, that hard fall before, and that was just a product of his high effort on offense. As that ball is flipped up ahead, Tedesco makes a move. On Schiller, flips it up into the box, goes long. Walton defending. As Baum gets it up ahead to Wall, and Wayne Hills was trying to get a run here. Gonzalez coming over, and it's handled by DeMeo. DeMeo gets it blocked by Walton, but Sharon was able to get it up to Palmarosa. Walton stepping in again. Oh, and he loses control, but Pearl is there to bail out his buddy. So Walton, the sophomore, was in perfect position, but whiffed. No, didn't whiff, but very much mishandled that ball. But luckily, Pearl was in position as well to come away with it. As that's a nice ball from DeMeo, knocked away by Italiano. As Italiano goes flying, but couldn't come away with that one. Into the box, Rubino gets it. And then the defense just continuing to play well for Hills. Just that one breakdown so far. As Baum makes a run now. He's got plenty of room and space. This is dangerous. Baum with a great ball for Benny. It's a race against the goalie, and Riviello gets there first. But, Joe, we are now under 25 minutes to go in the game, nearing the midway point of the second half. At what point does Coach Graham go for the offense? Well, I think he's got to go. Got to go to the offense as soon as possible, John. They got to stop playing def defensive soccer. I mean, well, obviously you still got to play defense, but right now they need a goal to send it in overtime. So they need to do it as soon as possible. Well, I would like to see Wayne Hills' seniors control the ball and calm down a little bit and try to 
control the action right now. Even if even if you don't score, just having the ball on your foot, passing it around a little bit, gives you confidence and, and shows that you can keep control of the game. Right now, they're kind of I wouldn't say they're panicking, but they're you know they're trying to make plays. They're trying to you know take risks, which is a good thing to do because if if it, if you cash in on it, you have a great chance. But I really would like to see them slow it down a little bit and take more calculated risks on offense like just pass it back and forth to one another as Baum tries to give a ball up ahead for Keegan so Joe just as we mentioned trying to get offense in coach Graham goes to that two striker look that 4-4-2 as opposed to the 4-5-1 and now he's trying to get some offense with both Keegan and Titel in the game and Joe Keegan, one of those kids, getting an opportunity to play after the suspensions, and so far he's he seemed to, to do pretty well so far. I guess he's gonna he might have another chance here, right by the net. Wayne Hill's probably with their best opportunity to score on the day. Well, Keegan is definitely gonna have his crack out of here in the states after probably playing JV for the most part this year. Rabino's ball way too high over the net. I guess he was too close to the net, John. He kicked it right over. <laughs> Tyler too strong of a leg. So like I said, Keegan, after probably playing less, less important games this year, is going to have his moment on the big stage tonight, filling in for the suspended Mike Loken tour. As we mentioned, seven players suspended a few games ago. As Zager gets that one from Walton, Zager flips it up ahead for Keegan. And it goes out of bounds back over to Wayne Hills. That was Bell Dan Bellett on the knockaway. Zager will throw it in. Can't find anyone. Joe, is there, there's no five-second rule in soccer, is there? I don't think so, John. Come on, you're the expert. You know this. It's one or the oh, other. I yes. know I know everything, but I, I don't think I know that one. Which means I don't know everything then. Exactly. I'm just going to stop talking right now. Eddie Schiller gets it over. To Italiano, back to Prol. Italiano, this is what I'm talking about, just passing like that. Trying to find a hole, it gets inside for, Ke for Keegan. Keegan is going to kick it out to Zager. Zager's pass goes blocked. Zager gets it back toward the middle, but Valley controls it. This is Prol getting inside now for Baum. Baum puts a shot, it goes way high. The chip from Evan had a little too much oomph, and it goes over the net. So Valley will have the goal kick. But Joe Evan Baum in space, very dangerous. And I like seeing him take charge and put a shot on net rather than looking for the pass because he turned around and felt that there was no one behind him. So he took it himself. It was definitely a good decision, just did not execute on the chip. <laughs> I don't know if Wayne Hills feels pressure to score right now. I mean, they got plenty of time. They shouldn't be rushing on their offensive set. Oh, oh my God. What a collision between Dan Bellett and Mike Walton. Wow. Bellett absolutely destroyed Walton, who's a very slight boy. He really is just a boy. He's a sophomore, a 14-year-old kid. I guess they. I guess that's why they call it football, John, because it's <laughs> played like American football. <laughs> well... Everywhere except the United States, as there's another hard collision. That was Brett Pohl and Issa. Issa got the harder of the hit in that collision. Under 20 minutes to go past the midway point of the second half. Hills trying to play catch up down by one. Baum can't control it. Mark Lucci battling Schiller for the ball. And it's going to go out of bounds to Wayne Valley. <laughs> Wayne Valley wants to take as much time as they can yeah. on defense. I was just about to say that. Stalling a little bit. You know, that's the nature of the sport, finding the cheapest and most unfair ways to gain an edge. That's why I've only been to five high school soccer games in my life. 
And Rabino steals that one. Tyler has played rock solid defense today. And they blow the whistle dead. Rabino has to fix his shin guard. Evident of how hard he's played today. Just done a tremendous job back there. It's kind of weird, John. I thought he was arguing with the ref for a second. <laughs> I thought they were going to pull a T on I was <laughs> Pull a T. I was waiting for the yellow card to come out. But the ref just pointed and said he's got to fix his leg. A strong kick from Tyler. Headed up by Sharon, but not a good one as Titel is running after it, trying to keep it in bounds. They're falling all over each other out there. Titel continuing the battle. Italiano over there now. Schiller will help out. Italiano pinned against the sideline. Flips it up ahead toward Benny. Titel into the corner. So it's going to go out of bounds or a free kick for the Indians with 17 and a half minutes to go in the game. Clock ticking on Wayne Hills. A free kick is a nice low line drive, but it goes into the Wayne Hills bench. So the Patriots will take over now. Schiller's throw in finds its way to bound, but Valley takes it right back. The run for Tedesco is no good. Rabino was there on the trip. Taken right back by Lucci. Another collision. Italiano involved in that one along with Gold. We haven't mentioned his name too much in this half. Gold up ahead to Titel. Titel with the header. He has a run at it now. Benny making a move against the Wayne Valley defense. Titel along that far sideline. Good. The center is headed away by Wayne Valley. The flip up ahead for Palma Rosa is no good. Walton shields him away, lets it go out of bounds. Nice play by Mike Walton as Palma Rosa gives him a shove. Rabino once again taking the free kicks, taking the load off Seidman's shoulders. Titel battling. 15.46 to go here in the game. Wayne Hills players hoping it's not 15.46 to go in their careers. As that one's up ahead for Keegan in, it's taken back by Wayne Valley and that's a long clear for the Indians. Palmarosa battling Prol and Prol knocks it out. So a nice contest there from Brett Prol as Valley's going to check in a host of subs. Three kids coming in for them. Probably a bunch of defenders doing whatever they can to not let Wayne Hill score. And that's going to certainly hurt Wayne Hill's chances. Three fresh set of legs and probably three defensive minded players. And with only two offensive players for Wayne Hill's. It's going to be tough. That's really, it's really not a good combination. Not at all. Hills will have to dig themselves out of a hole, or they could find their season coming to a very abrupt end here after going 7-1 and one in their last eight. Schiller will let that one go out of bounds. Rubino again going to take it with 14.35 and counting. This will be a shot on net, John. <laughs> Rabino finds Gold in the middle of the field. Gold to Baum. Back over to Titel. Titel tried to find Baum, but it overshoots him, and Prol gets the steal. Prol will find Walton over here on the near side. Chase. And now it's going to go over to Seidman in the net. He'll scoop that one up. Say. 
So Zager up ahead to Gold. Gold in the middle. There's their lead 13 goal scorer right there. Gold makes a move. He's shielded off. Hills wants a foul in the box. They want that penalty kick. Zager with his arms in the air. Gold can't believe it. So Valley gets that call. Joe foul or not? Well, they were in the box. Wayne Valley defender held Jason Gold down. I couldn't believe it. As He should be shooting a penalty kick right now. As even as the calls in the box are supposed to be with calls outside the box, you know that, that refs are a little more hesitant to call that foul when they're in the box because it, it results in almost an automatic goal for the other team. And that would have been a very gutsy call by the refs if they had called it, but they don't. And now Walton has a throw in over here on the Valley side of the field. Is a nice job there by DeLuise. And Prohl flips it up ahead, but no one's there. Keegan is in full pursuit, but he's not going to get there in time. And there's a whistle here. They're going to say it was deflected, and Hill's going to get a corner. Zager was calling for the ball earlier, and he's going to get a shot here to put a centering pass. So Hills will load the entire box. Walton and Pearl, the only guys back. Rubino into the box. The senior wants to score. He doesn't want this to be his last game. Coming up from sweeper, Rubino wants the ball. He's going after it. It's a high shot, finds the top of the net. So the wind takes Zager's ball and blows it over that crossbar. And Wayne Hills couldn't do anything with that one, Joe. Blown opportunity. It's unfortunate, John. That may be one of the last opportunities they get throughout the course of this game. I mean, any opportunity right now is golden for Wayne Hills. It's they a rough to, one to small. It's it, a rough one to swallow. It really is. They have to take advantage of everything they get right now. With 12 minutes to go in the game. one nothing Wayne Valley. Pearl heads it, but Valley controls it. They have a two-on-two -two coming back. Rubino tracking it. Heads that one up ahead for Schiller. And Schiller puts that one up. It's going to go out of bounds over to Valley. And Pearl with the knockaway. Rubino there, up ahead for Zager. Zager has room, but he kind of lost a little bit. And he finds Schiller, who tried to get it up toward Titel, but couldn't do it. And now Valley has control again. Schiller over to corral it. Tries to get it down the sideline, but it goes out of bounds. Back over to the Indians with 11 minutes to go. Time is taking away in the Wayne Hills heads, John. And they know they have to attack quickly. They will go all out in this le next 10.55. Because they know that their careers will be over if they lose this game. And they do not want that to happen. A lot of these kids just one sport athletes. Of course, Tyler Rubino will, has a baseball season to look forward to. But the majority of them, once primarily soccer players, they don't want to see it end like this. Especially the seniors, of course. But we won't jump the gun because we, of course, would like to see overtime. Here is a shot in the box for Valley. Saved by Seidman. What a stop from Max Seidman, the senior goalie, keeping his season alive. What, what a stop. <laughs> that was impressive. And Hills is very frustrated with that whistle. So the Patriots trying to trying to will their way to victory, and right now the refs aren't helping them out, and they're letting them know what they think about it. <laughs> Valley into the box. The centering pass is no good. Deflected away by the Patriots. Baum chasing it into the corner. Another collision. And Hills will get the benefit of the call. With this time. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. So Tyler with us, another powerful kick over the head of Titel. That one was in Keegan territory, the further striker there. And Valley was able again to get to the loose ball first. Titel defending, Valley content with just holding the ball right now with 8.57 to go. This is Bellet 
Back to DeMeo. Flip, flipping it up to DeMeo now. He's, DeMeo is going to knock it away out of bounds. And yes. So that head will go out of bounds, and Zager is probably going to get the throw in. Zager looking for Benny, headed away. Gold heads it again. Keegan going for it. Italiano in on it. It's a shot on net for Valley, and it goes wide. Sideman was all over it if it had been on net, but it was wide to the right, and Wayne Hills is going to get the ball back. But Joe, just 7.30 to go. they got to start making pushes on them. they got to start getting more opportunities to score, no doubt. Because as much as Wayne Hills wants to get things going on offense, the ball is still on their side of the field. Valley showing why they're the higher seed in this tournament right now. Palmarosa gets it stolen away, and they're going to call a foul on Schiller. Another call that Wayne Hills does not like. So a dangerous spot for Valley to take this free kick for probably just about 20, 22 yards out. Puts a shot on net, saved by Sideman. So Max has played a pretty good game so far today. Not much you can complain from by him. Now that ball is going to find the net, or the goalie, rather. I wish it found the net, but Titel can't get to it. That's another high punt from Riviello. Headed up ahead by Palmarozo into a triangle of Wayne Hills players. Rabino lost it for a second, gets it back. He's going to defer to Prohl. Prohl with a line drive, headed straight up in the air. Titel all over the field, just doing whatever he can. You can see it, Joe. I mean, the seniors are the ones going all out right now. They need their help, though, from the juniors like Gold and Prohl now to make plays because you know the seniors don't want it to end. You see Rabino, Titel, and Zager going all out right now, but Gold is Gold and T Pearl are two immensely talented players that need to help out. Yeah, John, you're right, but there's so much you could do when Wayne Valley's played perfect defense today. I mean, Valley has played just an absolutely fantastic game today, showing why they are the four seed in the tournament, as it's going to be deflected by Baum leaping through the air, and Schiller's going to kick it out of bounds. Ooh, that ball <laughs> looked like it rolled about 20 feet into the woods there. Usually they get knocked out by branches, but that one, that one, that's history. I would not like to be the ball boy. <laughs> well, if Hills' the season's over, I think these, these, these are some of their balls, and they might not care if they lose this game because there's five minutes to go. And all Palm is going to be called off sides there. The first off sides call we've had today. Just showing how disciplined these forwards are. Could have saw that Rob was almost off sides on the goal he scored, but the ref didn't call it. Simon scoops it up with 4.45 to go, kicks it up. Looking for Titel, it's headed up. Zager is here for it. Battling Bellet, and they're going to give it to Wayne Hills. Walton will take the free kick. Oh, he's going to give it off to Rabino. Who else? Tyler assessing the situation right now as the Pills players gather in the box. That one looks to be a little too long. It's headed up by Valley. Ty Keegan heads it into the traffic, but it's knocked away by Wayne Valley. And Tedesco flips it up ahead for Palmarosa. And Valley has a run working now. And Rabino knocks it away. Zager's there. Zager kicks it right to a Wayne Valley player. No! 
And that one's going to go out of bounds after the threat from Wayne Valley. It's a big play that kept their season alive right there, John. Well, it's a couple of times now, but Wayne Valley needs to play. No, we need Wayne Valley to make plays to keep their season alive because Hills is going to check in another forward. Looks like Charlie Owens, look, judging by the gallop, as Eddie, 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 he's limping off the field. Eddie Schiller is limping off the field, one of the defenders for Wayne Hills. He's played the entire game today. As Wayne Hills, oh, well, that shot goes wide, but Wayne Hill is playing shorthanded, of course, with the seven suspensions. We haven't seen many subs. We've They've only worked in really a 12-man rotation, only really one sub getting in. That was Keegan. So do you think that's playing a role? Are these players too tired right now to make plays? I think adrenaline's keeping them on the field, John. I, I have to agree with you, Joe. As long as their fitness is okay, I don't think the, the shorthandedness of this roster is really hurting them too much. Intercepted by Baum. Baum chipping it up for Titel. Perfect ball. Keegan makes a run for it. Keegan into the box, but it's taken away by Wayne Valley. Goes out of bounds. So Wayne Hills is going to have a very important corner. 2.35 to go. This is their biggest chance here. Could be their last. Could be their last, John. You took the words right out of my mouth. They got to capitalize. They got to score right here. That's all there's to it. State well, game, got to come up huge. This is where primetime players come to perform. Max Zager needs to give his playmakers a chance. He puts a shot. It's a better one this time. In the box, Italiano takes a shot at it. Keegan will put a low shot. It's knocked away by Valley. Pearl with a crack out, and it's cleared out by the Indians. So Wayne Valley making a great defensive stand there with two minutes to go, and Hills really has to press now. Eric had an opportunity there, but whiffed on it. And then, oh, John, they were so close. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> well, they're going to give it to Wayne Valley off the, the whistle, so the clock is stopped with two minutes to go. So we're in stoppage time now, Joe. So Limited time for Hills, John. And Wayne, all, Wayne Valley is going to play keep away right now. All hands on deck for the Patriots. Down one nothing here late in the second half. Valley keeps it in bounds. Italiano there to make a play on it. Gold kicks it off a Wayne Valley player. Headed straight up, and Valley will get it deep into Wayne Hills' end, but it's taken away. Is that Schiller? It is. Eddie back in the game after leaving due to injury. S appears to be okay. Must have rolled an ankle or done something not too significant. But Rubino finds Walton down the near side. Up ahead for Zager. Zager with a smart play to let it go, and he goes out of bounds. Zager wants the call, and it's not going to come. Prohl takes it away. Up ahead for Gold. Gold up to Baum, takes it across midfield. Nucci battling Baum for it. Zager in on it now. Zager gets it back for Walton. They're going to call a foul on Wayne Valley. They're going to give it back to Rubino. So this could be Wayne Hills' last chance. This could be it right here. Tyler has the game on his foot right now. He's got to put a perfect ball into the box. It's a low line drive, knocked out by Valley. Another chance stopped by the Indians and now Titel is gonna chase it all the way back toward midfield. Just awaiting the whistle from the referees. Now this one in its latter few seconds as Simon comes all the way out to get it up toward Prohl. This is Italiano on the far side. Eric with some space puts it inside but it's cleared out by Wayne Valley again. So some last-ditch effort here from the Patriots. A couple of good chances, but couldn't capitalize. And now Palmarosa with a run. Rabino there to make a play. And Rabino knocks it out of bounds. And that is going to do it for the game. The final whistle sounds. And that'll do it for the career of several Wayne Hills Patriots.
a bunch of seniors will head out in a disappointing fashion as Wayne Valley beats the Wayne Hills Patriots by a final score of 1-0 here in the first round of the state playoffs. So, Joe, a great run for the Wayne Hills soccer team late in the season, but it ends here abruptly in the first round of the state playoffs. Well, John, they, they played well to get here. They had a lot of confidence going in this game. I mean, you really can't argue about the <laughs> game Wayne Hills, Wayne Hills played. I mean, they played great. They just gave up one goal. It was all right. It was a great game, and both teams played hard. Just Wayne Valley got lucky and came out with the victory. Well, Joe, I'm pretty sure Eric Italiano just got a red card. I don't know what that means because his career is over, but he got one. But, yeah, Joe, definitely a disappointing way for these players to end their season. They had such a great rebound after that 1-7 and seven start. You have to give all the credit in the world to the senior captains, Max Zager, Tyler Rubino, Benny Titel, and Evan Baum, and, of course, the goalie, Max Seidman. All five of them really finished their career with class. They played a great four years here at Wayne Hills. They put a lot of time and effort into this program, and they deserve to be commended for their efforts over the past four years. So the curtain closes on their careers, but it opens even wider on the on what's soon to be the senior captains, Jason Gold, Brett Prohl, and of course Walton will be back next year as a junior. So definitely some potential for this Wayne Hills team in the future, but a disappointing way to end the season after a great run late in the year. Absolutely. I mean, what can you say? They were league champs, so they I guess you could say they ended on a high note. Well, they, they... After starting 1-7? and seven? Yes, they definitely had some consolation after a very, very rough start as Wayne Valley applauded by their fans for a marvelous effort here today. The Indians played just a tremendous game all around, offense, defense. They deserve to win this game, no question about it. And it's going to be a, a grim bus ride home for us in Wayne Hills. So that's about all we have to say about this one. A disappointing end to the Wayne Hills season. So for everyone on our broadcast team, our wonderful cameraman, John Giordello, our soccer expert, Joe Rapp, I am John Vita saying have a nice day here from Wayne Valley.